A scar barrel is a muzzle attachment for your blaster that through a combination of venting air and imparting rotation on your darts, increases your overall precision so that you can actually hit what you're aiming at. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the V2 scar by AC Foamworks, and I'm gonna be comparing a before and after with a handful of common darts to see just how much it actually benefits the precision of my shots. And in the interest of full disclosure, I did not pay for these units. They were provided to me by AC Foamworks for the purposes of this review. Fortunately, anyone who knows me will tell you, I have no problem telling you that you are doing a bad job to your face or in front of hundreds of people on the internet. Double fortunately, a scar barrel is something that we can actually measure objectively. It either works or it doesn't. It either helps or it doesn't. Now, my methodology for this testing is pretty simple. I set up a target on one side of my yard and I put a mark on the ground on the other side of my yard. Then I loaded up Talon Mags with brand new Worker Gen 2s, Adventure Force Pros, and Dart Zone Max Darts. For the purposes of this test, in order to make things as equal as possible, no dart will be fired more than once. So every one of these shots is a brand new dart fresh out of the package, which may or may not have defects in the case of Worker Gen 2s, but that's how they are and that's how they work. And I'll be firing these darts out of my Caliburn with a K25, which nets it an FPS of somewhere between 150 and 160. And I chose this blaster because I felt that it was a good representation of a common blaster setup at a common power level within our hobby. And I think that gives you a better idea of what most people will see. Now, during the test, I am standing on my mark, trying to be as still as possible, keeping the blaster as level as possible. And I'm aligning the crosshair of my sight with the dead center of the target. And I wanna remind you that if the dart doesn't hit the center of the target, even though that's where I'm aiming, that doesn't mean that it's not a precise shot. What's more important is the actual grouping of the darts. Are they landing in the same relative place? Are they grouping together tightly? Are they firing in a consistent pattern? Because if the pattern is consistent and the grouping is tight, the sight can be adjusted to move that grouping so that it actually hits where I want it to hit. But if five of the darts hit dead center and the other 10 darts go flying wildly all over the place or it's just super inconsistent, then there's no degree of training on my part or adjustment of my gear that I can make to make sure that I actually hit the target. So I just wanna make sure the groupings are tight. And while I am aligning the sight with a common point for every shot, I am a human and I am going to be moving the blaster around a little bit, no matter how much I try not to. And it's a pump action springer. So the act of actually priming the blaster is going to move the blaster a little bit every single time. So I am trying to keep the blaster as stable and consistent as possible. However, I'm not perfect. So doing the best I can. We're starting this test with worker gen twos and this is with no muzzle attachment. So just bare 16 millimeter aluminum barrel. and you'll see that the grouping is decent. They are broadly falling around my target. If this was a human, I would probably hit them with maybe half of them. It's, they're, it's okay. And next up, I'll be loading up Adventure Force Pros. Again, no muzzle attachment, brand new darts. And you can already tell that the grouping on the Adventure Force Pros is much better than the Worker Gen 2s. The performance is pretty solid right out of the gate, which is what I would expect from Adventure Force Pro darts because they're just good darts and you should use them. And then finally loading up the brand new Dart Zone Max darts. And um, they, uh, they sure are darts and they sure, they sure do dart things. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it. And we'll talk more about that in another video. Now I'm going to repeat the test. However, I'm going to actually attach the AC Foamworks scar. And this scar is friction fit, meaning you just push it on the end of the barrel and it just kind of locks in place. And the scar comes in a handful of varieties. There's one for 16 millimeter barrels to fit your caliber and talon claw link sort of setup. There's a version for the Aeon and Nexus Pros, a version for the Jet Blaster Cita, and then a 1732nds version for brass barrels. Obviously, because this is a caliber and I'm using the 16 millimeter fitting, however, the performance of all of them should be identical. The only difference is the diameter of the base. Now, starting with the Worker Gen 2s, you should immediately notice that 
these are grouping more tightly, at least on the horizontal axis. The vertical axis is still a bit hit or miss, but again, that has to do more with general air seal and the distance that I am from the actual target because gravity is a thing. But nearly all of these darts made it to the target area and the majority of them actually hit the target. And now if I overlay the previous shots onto this, you can definitely see how much of an impact this has. It's extremely noticeable. Now, continuing the test and going into the Adventure Force Pros, I was actually a little bit surprised by the result here, especially because I believe the scar was probably designed around the Adventure Force Pro darts specifically, but the increase was not as dramatic. However, the grouping is noticeably tighter and more of those shots actually made it to the target board. When I shot the first time without a scar, I had quite a few more like whirly birds that just flew away and didn't actually hit. And this time, almost all of them actually hit the board. The only ones that didn't were misfires that just kind of fell to the floor. And then double finally, moving on to the max darts, this one actually surprised me the most because after the first round, I had no hopes for these darts at all. However, with this scar, nearly all of the darts actually hit and they are showing some semblance of grouping along a vertical plane. And I am extremely impressed with the difference that this scar made with those darts because honestly, without a scar, those darts, those darts. So overall, a definitive increase in precision. It's a noticeable boost to actually hitting the target that I'm aiming at. Again, focus on the grouping, not necessarily if I hit the center of the target, especially because these groupings are all very vertical and people tend to be vertical. So if I actually zero this a bit, aim for the sternum of a person, I'm probably going to hit them because it's going to be in this sort of region. There's a spider crawling on the tripod. Now, the trade-off with all scar barrels is velocity because you can't have an object traveling at a speed collide with something that's literally using friction to manipulate it without losing velocity. And generally with most scars, I lose five to 10 FPS depending on the power of the blaster. On my Caliburn, because it's already a bit weaker, I tend to lose more in the 10 FPS range. However, with this, I only lost about an average of three FPS, which was kind of surprising. However, I tend to kind of overtune my scars and make them fairly tight to get more rotation. However, that obviously is going to cause more friction and reduce the velocity by more. So I think this has a good balance of improving that grouping, but actually not slowing things down, which is also important for hitting a target. But then the question is, is this better than other scars? And the answer to that question is basically, it depends. Every blaster at every power level with every dart is going to have a different result with a different scar because they have different amounts of porting and different amounts of rotation. But it's hard to say definitively, this is the best scar out there because it might be for some darts and again, not for others. And this is why I chose a really common average blaster with very common half length darts because I believe that that's a good showcase of what you are likely to experience with this product with an average blaster, especially because getting into my opinion on this, one of the advantages of this scar is that it's just a really good off the shelf offering that kind of offers a turnkey solution to just making your blaster more precise. All someone has to do is go on Etsy using the link below and you can pick this up for about $15 US with free shipping anywhere in the US. And it's going to come pre-strung, so you don't have to do anything. Stringing a scar is not complicated, but I know that it can be daunting to a lot of people who have never done it before because it sounds complicated or looks complicated. But even if you are very comfortable or capable of stringing it yourself, it's nice to have somebody else do it because it's nice to have somebody else do it. And I think that makes it perfect for the player who picked up something like a Max Striker or an Nexus Pro with the intent of getting a competitive blaster that they don't really have to worry about or tinker with or modify. Because this is an extension of that mentality. You can just buy this, pop it on, and you're good to go. I think that has a lot of appeal to a lot of people. Also, just as a product, it comes in this kind of metallic silky orange, a heat reactive orange that turns white, an army green, and a black. And aesthetically, I think it's pretty cool. I like the flash hider look because 
most scars tend to be modeled after suppressors because it's easier to kind of hide all the strings inside of a cylinder like that. This obviously has exposed strings, but they're not super noticeable and I do think it looks cool. This design also has excessive porting. If you see these holes, they're gigantic. So almost all of the excess muzzle blast of your shots is getting vented out through this. And I believe that's why it has such a noticeable improvement, even at lower velocities, even without being very tightly strung. It's also worth noting that this product is designed for half length darts. And I did some testing with full lengths, which it definitely increased the grouping, however, not quite as dramatically, which isn't unexpected because full length darts at lower velocities are already going to be less precise in the first place. So it made it better, but you know, it can only do so well and it's only in contact with the dart for so long. I think the majority of that precision increase again is from the porting actually decreasing the muzzle blast and not flinging them all over the place when they leave the barrel. Now, personally, there are two things here that I do not prefer compared to other scars. I, as I have stated in the past, don't like friction fit scars. I don't like scars that you just push on the end. I prefer that they have screws to actually center themselves or some sort of call it locking system to lock itself in place. Mostly because over time, this can wear down a little bit. It's not really a problem, but it does happen, especially if the fit already isn't super tight. This fit was solid. I swung my blaster around, it didn't come off, but I just, I just don't like it. I prefer to have something that I feel like locks. Again, that's a personal preference, but some people really like being able to just shove something on the end and take it off and not have to worry about it and not have to go through a whole locking mechanism. So if you wanna be able to change it out quickly, great. Also, this is a fixed six string scar. You have no idea how many takes it took to get to that, which means that the strings are in a fixed position that do not move. You cannot adjust this scar in any way. And as an off the shelf product to common blasters that are already out there, I, I think that's fine. I don't see a problem with that. However, if you use a dart and you find that it happens to jam in this specific scar, you can't decrease the tension of the line to decrease the likelihood of that jam. You just can't make any adjustments at all. So it either works for you or it doesn't and that's it, which, in some ways is a selling point and in other ways is not. I really like modularity in my scars and the ability to adjust them because I use my scars on a variety of blasters. I like to kind of move them around and I swap out my springs and I change out my darts somewhat frequently. And especially at an event, I wanna be able to just kind of quickly adjust things. Now, circling around, again, that's not necessarily a bad thing that it doesn't allow those adjustments because also when you have very modular fine grain tuning ability. If I turn something 81 degrees, I'm not going to remember to turn it exactly 81 back to reset it before I turn it again to make sure that I'm always turning it the same amount. It's always kind of arbitrary. I just sort of keep adjusting until it feels good. And with this, I don't have to. You just throw it on and it works and that's it. Also, it's a small thing, but orders from AC Foamworks come with an Adventure Force Pro Dart that are signed that it's a small thing, but it, I, it's kind of cool. I like it. I don't want to lose this dart. <clears throat> now, again, if you are interested in picking one of these up, I'll have a link in the description box down below. And if you pick one up or you already have one, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and situations where it worked well for you. And if there are any situations where it didn't work well for you, because those things are good to know. And I want to say thank you to AC Foamworks for providing these units and giving me a chance to actually take a look at these because I may not have picked these up otherwise since I typically print all of my own stuff. And it's good to actually see what's out there in the wild because not everyone prints their own stuff. And thank all of you for watching. I'll see you next week.